Hello makers, and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris, and if you're new here, I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week. So smash that subscribe button so you can catch more. This week, I wanted to share with you a pattern review as well as a sew along for the Marsha Wrap Dress by Rad Patterns. And this also happens to be the January pattern for Threadcrate. And if you want to save a bit of dough on your next subscription to Threadcrate or Nextbox, use discount code SHEARSTITCHERY to receive 10% off. So I'm going to start off with the sew along, but stay tuned till the end because I do have a pattern review and some modifications that I did to this pattern that you're going to want to check out. So let's get to it. So we're going to start with the muslin toil modifications that I made. So after making up the muslin, I realized that it was a little too low cut for my taste. So I'm deciding to add half an inch on either side of the pattern piece. So what I am going to do is just tape on some extra paper. These are actually cut offs from when I had cut out my pattern and I'm just using my quilting ruler to draw in a half an inch and I'm just following that half an inch mark along where I had cut my pattern out. And I'm just drawing a dotted line going all the way across here. And then I am going to fill it in just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. But if I wasn't doing this on camera, I probably would just cut it out as is. I'm also marking that I added a half an inch here so that when I look back at this pattern, I know exactly what modifications I made. And don't worry, this is my rotary cutter that I use specifically for paper. It makes cutting out my pattern so much faster. Now, before we start, you're going to want to change your needle. So there's a couple of different options. There's a jersey needle. There are several types of microtex needles, as well as one for stretch fabrics. I'm going to use a jersey needle on this. Now I wanted to talk to you about the right and wrong sides of a modal knit fabric. So here's an exaggerated photo of what knit fabric looks like. So you've got some V's going in on the top side. This is going to be our right side of our fabric. And then if you look very closely on the wrong side of the fabric, you're going to see some lines or ridges as opposed to those V's. Now, when we look a little closer, you can see the difference between the right and the wrong side here. We're going to start off doing the lined bodice with sleeves. So now that we've cut out our back piece as well as our front piece, we are going to place them right sides together, being very careful to choose the right and wrong side because it is quite difficult to tell. And I am going to attach them at the shoulder seam as well as at the side seams. So I'm just placing a couple of pins in here in place and you can use ballpoint pins as opposed to regular sharp pins just because they go in a little nicer or you can use those alligator clips that you use in quilting. Now I am taking some clear elastic here because I want to stabilize my shoulder seams because this is a very slinky knit. I don't want my shoulders to slowly grow and droop on me throughout the day as I am wearing them. So really this is just going to hold that shape. So I've cut those pieces being sure to pre-stretch it. You've got a couple of options for stretch stitches here. I'm going to use the lightning stitch. So I have placed a scrap piece of paper underneath and you can also use tissue paper because if you don't do this, it is going to suck your fabric up into the feed dogs underneath and you're going to have a heck of a time. I do not suggest backstitching just because it will get sucked up in there. And then I am placing the clear elastic along the raw edges and then I'm sewing with the half inch seam allowance, making sure that I'm catching just the edge of that clear elastic. So the vast majority of the clear elastic is going to be in the seam allowance. Then I just pull off the piece of paper and then we'll move on to the side seam here. And with the side seam, when I am starting, I'm just placing the paper underneath and then I am going to stitch as normal. Now, this will doll your needle a little bit faster than traditional methods of sewing just fabric. So you're going to want to switch out your needle at the end of this project regardless. 
Next, I am serging my edges and I'm making sure to follow that seam allowance seam. You can also zigzag your edges and well, knits don't fray, you don't technically need to do anything. I just like to do it because it gives it a little bit more durability. So this is what this looks like. We're going to do the same with the lining. And at this point, this is where you would place your me made tags on the inside of your garment if you're going to put some tags in there. Then you're going to place the lining and the main fashion fabric right sides together. And I'm just nesting the seams here. So I've got one seam going in one direction and one seam going in the other direction. What this will do will distribute some of that fabric weight so that you don't have a big bulky seam right at the shoulder seam. You don't want that. It is going to be dreadfully uncomfortable. So then I am just pinning along the neckline going all the way down from the ends because we are going to stitch this in place. And this is how we're going to attach our two pieces together. Now, if you have a more stable knit, you just need to stitch this in place. This is a very slinky knit. So what you are going to want to do is you're going to take out that clear elastic, being sure to pre-stretch it. You don't want to ever stitch it on if you haven't pre-stretched it. And then you're going to stitch it on. I'm not cutting a piece out here. I actually put it on as I sewed just so I didn't have any extra. So I sewed that on and surged it just as I did for the shoulder and side seams. Now we're going to turn it right side out here and now we are going to top stitch but there are a couple of different types of top stitching that we can use for knits. So there is the traditional zigzag. There is the triple zigzag stitch. There's also the lightning stitch which I used as my straight stitch and then you also have the option of using a twin needle. And so this one is a stretch twin needle. So don't use one for wovens. Make sure you use one for stretch or it will not look right. And the last option is to use a cover stitch machine. So here are what the options look like when they are done. We have our zigzag. We have the triple zigzag. We have the lightning stitch, which really shows up like a straight stitch. We have the twin needle and then we have the cover stitch. And then this is what it is going to look like on the back. And I'm actually not liking how the twin needle looks. It looks a little bunched up. Tension might be a little off there. I'm going to go with the cover stitch for my options. Now back to the bodice. So for the bodice here, we are just going to pin this in place because we don't want anything to move around on us. And then we are going to top stitch this. So when it's all done, this is what it should look like. And it looks like that from the wrong side and two stitches on the right side. I kind of messed up here. You can see that I stretched the fabric inappropriately on the one end, but it still looks good. Now onto the sleeves. So I decided to do the cap sleeves. Make sure to transfer the marking onto the sleeve because that is going to denote the front of your sleeve. Now we are just going to do the side seam of the sleeve just the same way that we have stitched all the rest of our seams. And then you are going to get your bodice piece. Now you're going to have the lining and the main bodice piece together. So you're actually going to be working with three layers of fabric. Now, if it's really slippery and you're not really confident that you're going to get this in one go, what you can do is base those seams of the bodice together in the armhole and then attach the sleeve. I'm just doing it in one step because it's a little bit faster and I'm using a ton of pins, so I'm not worried about anything slipping. So you can see I'm matching up my markings because I want to make sure that I have the front of the sleeve towards the front and the back of the sleeve towards the back. Now, after I've matched the markings, I then go and match the top of the sleeve here and I'm just pinning all the way around and we don't really have to ease any of the fabric in because it should fit perfectly around here. So once we have that all pinned, then we can go over and we will stitch it and then we are going to serge the edges. And that's what it will look like when it is all done. So I'm just gonna flip this right side out so you can see the sleeve. Next thing to do is to hem it and regardless of the length that you chose, this is gonna be the exact same step. I am just going to use these clips because there is a very tiny seam allowance between the hem of my sleeve and my underarm seam and putting a pin in there is just a lot of layers. So I'm just pinning this in place while well, clipping it in place. And then I am going to use my top stitching method and stitch it. And so once we've got that top stitched, it should look a little something like this, making sure you use a stretch top stitch. Now we're going to make the ties. They said you can use optional ribbon ties for the short versions. 
I don't like that because it doesn't look as nice, but that's just mine opinion. So you're going to cut one and a half or two inch strips of fabric, put them right sides together, stitch them, and then turn them right side out using a bodkin. I'm actually using a crochet latch hook. <laughs> now onto the skirt. And so with the skirt, we are going to place the two back pieces right sides together, and we're going to stitch down that back seam. And so Honestly, what I would do if I made this again is I would cut this on the fold. This is an unnecessary seam and in the line drawings, it's not even on there, but we will follow the pattern. Now onto attaching the back pieces to the front pieces. Now this is where we are going to mark down, which is the amount of our seam allowance here and we are going to place our tie. I've put a ribbon on here because originally I was going to do a ribbon and then realized it doesn't look good. So we're going to place the long tie because we've got too long and too short. So we're going to place the long tie and sandwich it in. You can see that that's the front piece that I've got on the top with right sides together. So we're just going to stitch down that seam and then we are going to serge it the exact same way that we finished all of our other seams. So I'm just going to pin this in place. And so I'm showing you pinning this, but the next photos you will see that I'm using the actual ties to do this. In the instructions, it says you can use the ribbon ties on the inside because it's less bulky, but I think that having everything the same color just looks a lot nicer and cleaner. And as long as you don't tie it in a big bow, you don't even see it anyway. So next we are going to do the opposite side. So we're going to put right sides together and this time we are going to pin all the way down. And so we're going to get that pinned nicely. And then on this side, when we go to attach our tie, we're actually going to attach it on top. So we're going to put the seam allowance marking on here, and then we're going to place the short tie on here. So we've got on one side, the long tie, which points to the outside. And then on the inside is the short tie because the short ties are going to be the ones that are going to be on the inside of your wrap skirt. So it should look something like this once it is all stitched together. And then we can move on to attaching this. So I wanted to show you just that there's the long tie on the outside end and the short tie on the inside end of this, just in case it was a bit confusing. Now we're going to attach the bodice to the skirt. So with this, we are going to also mark our seam allowance marking on here, which happens to be half an inch. And we're going to put that on either side of the skirt. And then we are going to attach the bottom of the skirt or the bodice right sides together. But first we are going to half it because it makes it a lot easier to match this up because it is a vast expanse of fabric going across here. So we're going to match up the center of our bodice with that center back seam. And I am just making sure that in all of the pieces that I have here, that they are nesting and flat and that I don't have any extra bulk. So I don't have three seams going to one side. Now on here, we want to match this up and we want our fabric to go right up to that point. You will have fabric going over the edge. That is okay. So you just want to make sure that your fabric comes up to that notch that you had made. And then we're going to pin it in place or use your clips. And so I'm just going to pin the rest of the bodice now that I have matched up all of the ends and the center, and I'm just distributing the fabric nicely. You shouldn't have to do any pulling at all. And I'm just trimming off any of the excess of that fabric that is there along the ends, just because mine didn't match up perfectly. So just going in and you will have three layers of fabric just because you have the lining bodice, the main bodice and the skirt piece. If you wanted to baste that bodice piece together before you attach the skirt, you are welcome to do so as well, because that would probably help you out, especially if you are worried about slipping. And so here you're just seeing that I am trimming this off. And right here, I nicked my scissors and wrecked them. And now I need to take them to go get sharpened. <laughs> Oh, Murphy's Law, hey, when you're sewing and you're moving fast, things like that tend to happen. Now we're just going to stitch all the way around on the skirt piece here. So 
I just wanted to show you that you have the long tie on one end sandwiched in between the skirt and the bodice and the short tie on the other end. And it's going to be the opposite sides that you have those ties on so that you know exactly where you're going to be placing those short and long ties so they actually tie up in the end. And once we have that done, it should look like this with the tie sandwiched in between that bodice and skirt piece. And this is just me tying it up just so you kind of have an idea and apologies. I've got the short ties off camera. I hadn't realized that when I was filming, but these are the outside long ties. Now on to the hem. So with the hem, we are just going to fold it up and it should give a nice crisp edge going all the way along and then finish it in your top stitching method of choice. And now we have the beautiful wrap skirt all ready and done for you to wear. So now that we have our wrap dress all created, I thought I would run down a little bit about a pattern review as well as some modifications I made. So I did up a test muslin and when I made it, it was very va va voom and very boobalicious. So I decided to add in a half an inch extra on the bodice pieces along the wrap to give a little extra coverage. Now it still creates that va va voom and a little extra cleavage. I'm usually a bit more modest and tend to wear things a little higher neckline, but I thought this being a Valentine's Day dress, my husband will surely appreciate this. So if you're considering making this, I would highly suggest doing up a muslin first, just to kind of see where you like things to sit on your neckline. I did a couple of tests in terms of bending over and if anything would gape and drape when I was moving and moving about and everything was good. Please note, this is a slinky fabric and I did use the elastic clear elastic going down the front hemline to create more stability. This will also help prevent some of that gaping and draping that sometimes wrap dresses get if they are billowing in the wind or if you are doing a little bit more movement. The only other thing that I changed to this pattern is I did stabilize the shoulder seams with clear elastic because there is a bit of strain on the shoulder seam and I just don't want it to droop out of shape and have my sleeves just slowly start to grow down throughout the day. Now I decided to do the above the knee length, which is super cute and will take me into spring and summer with this dress. Hence the reason I chose the cap sleeves as well. That being said, because the way that it curves up when it wraps, it does go up a wee bit high in the front for my liking. It is super sexy and cute, but I think that if I made this again, I would do the knee length version because then that wrap and that part in the middle that kind of goes up a little bit high wouldn't be as high. Overall, I really enjoyed this dress and it was super quick and fun to make and I hope you enjoy it too. And let me know in the comments down below how your dress went or if you have any other tried and true wrap dress patterns that you think I should check out. Until next time makers, let's get our sewspiration on. Bum, bum, ba, da, ba.